live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. There's still no driver in custody after a hit and run in Rockford. Police release an update on the condition of the bicyclist who's been in the hospital since the crash. Rockford's housing numbers hit an all time high. Experts look at what's driving prices higher and who's got the advantage in this market. And a Janesville man gives to families facing tough times. He says it's all to repay the generosity he was shown as a kid. Good afternoon, I'm Eric Wilson. Mimi Murphy is off. The 61 year old involved in a Rockford hit and run earlier this month has died. September 14th, a tan Toyota Camry hit a bicyclist in East State Street near the OSF St. Anthony Medical Center. The cyclist was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Police reported today he passed away. Yesterday, the suspect's car turned up in Minnesota. There's been no word on any arrests. A Rockford man is in custody after he's accused of sexual contact with a minor. Back in May, someone contacted Rockford police to investigate. The sensitive crimes unit identified Martin Mota as the suspect. The minor and Mota knew each other. Yesterday, Mota was arrested and taken to the Winnebago County Jail. He's charged with criminal sexual assault and aggravated criminal sexual abuse. Eyewitness News is committed to supporting survivors of all forms of violence and finding solutions. Our website has a list of resources that can help anyone who's struggling. Just go over to mystateline.com and click on the Stateline Strong tab. A Rockford man is charged for a murder from nearly a year and a half ago. April 14th, 2022, Rockford police were called to 11th Street and 6th Avenue for shots fired. They found Deontay Turner lying on the sidewalk. He died at the hospital. Detectives say Tyree Scott is responsible. Scott is charged with first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. He is in the Winnebago County Jail on unrelated charges. New numbers show Rockford's record housing market continues to rise. Average home prices now sit over $200,000. Drea Baroni joins us now in the studio. Drea, higher prices not keeping people from buying. That's right, Eric. Home prices are at a steady increase with many buyers looking to relocate here in Rockford. We're really excited that um, we're uh, breaking that $200,000 threshold. Uh, it's just an incredible milestone to me. New statistics show home prices in August across the Rockford region hit an all-time high. The average cost of a home in Winnebago, Boone, and Ogilvy counties is now $205,000. Connor Brown, the CEO of Northwest Illinois Alliance of Realtors, told me how that number came to be. We have a little over 300 homes in the three-county area that are on the market right now. Uh, that is a significant drop uh, from what we saw last year, uh, down about 26%. So when you have fewer and fewer homes uh, and still a large large pool of buyers that are out there competing, it's, it is pushing those prices further up. Due to that low inventory, this most certainly is a seller's market. Buyers are still scrambling. Uh, we're still seeing multiple offer situations. We're still seeing homes sell within a day. Uh, so just a lot of activity. Uh, so that hasn't slowed down at all despite higher mortgage interest rates. While the market may be seller based right now, Brown offered advice for those looking to buy. The first thing a buyer should do is contact a local lender. They're going to know exactly what sort of programs are out there, the best sort of financing that's available for them. Uh, they're also going to understand very well our local market. The second thing is reach out to a realtor. They're going to guide you through that process. Uh, it can be somewhat of a patient exercise because you are competing against other buyers. Uh, but you know, if you find that next house, you need to be able to act on it quickly. There is projected to be some fluctuation in the market heading into the colder months, but Brown assures there will still be opportunities to buy. Eric. Thanks, Drea. A state line park gets a brand new name. The Village of New Milford and the Rockford Park District unveiled their plans for Upper Park. It's now called Victory Park. Along with a name change, several renovations are underway, like a new playground, a new drinking fountain, and a connecting trail to Atwood Park. State Representative Maurice West hopes his project brings the Rockford and New Milford communities closer together. A stronger relationship between New Milford and the uh, greater Rockford region. Uh, we're, it's not, it's, it shouldn't be Rockford versus the re rest of the smaller communities. It should be Rockford and the rest of the, our small communities because we are working together to build up the Winnebago County uh, as a whole. A $600,000 grant from the Illinois Department of Natural Resources is paying for the project. Renovations are expected to be finished next year. Stateline volunteers come together to give back to the community. United Way of Rock River Valley held its Day of Caring. 
More than 50 volunteers from 12 companies and organizations participated. They helped out at nonprofits across the region, like the Discovery Center Museum. The manager for the center's new maker space says events like this benefit everyone. Uh, as a nonprofit museum, we rely a lot on um, our community to come help us out, and so it's really great to have people from from the community come and help us out with these cool projects for the public. So in the end, it's a big, it's a big uh, giving back to, to everybody. So it's really cool to have collaborations like that. Most of the preparations at Discovery Center went toward the museum's spooky science event scheduled for the end of October. A local man gives back to the community in a special way. Nikhail Delgado visited him in Janesville. Nikhil, he's paying it forward to help kids and adults. That's right, Eric. Kevin Maglin received a bike from a stranger when he was a kid. Now he's paying that generosity to others. So far, he's peddled, peddled over 600 bikes to those who can't afford a new one. From bikes to brakes, pedals, and tires, Kevin cleans up and fixes bikes either he finds or are donated to him. He's been posting them on Facebook to give, to give away since 2020. He says it's all to give back to the community. A lot of people are, are on tough times right now. and. Um People reach out to me and donate bikes and um, I'm just happy and willing to fix any bike that somebody gives me to give back to the city of Janesville and Rock County residents. Kevin tells me he has some more expensive bikes that just need a little work. He plans on auctioning those off at different benefits. Kevin also can drop off or pick up bikes to those who can't get to him. I have all that information on this story at mystateline.com. Eric. Thanks, Nikel. We're just days away from a potential federal government shutdown. Up next, lawmakers from both parties pass the Senate's stopgap measure, but it may not be enough. Our temperatures this afternoon, despite the cloud cover, made it into the low 70s. 73, our official high this afternoon. We've got the 80s in store for the weekend. How long that'll last and when the next chance for rain moves in, all in the first one forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. Your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. We have just two days left for Congress to act before a likely federal government shutdown. So far, Republicans who control the House have not passed any sort of funding bills to keep operations afloat. ABC's Liz Landers looks at where things stand from Capitol Hill. Congress barreling towards a government shutdown as time continues to run out to strike a deal. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is now negotiating with Senate Republicans and Democrats to add border provisions to the Senate's own stopgap funding measure to keep the government open. I've talked this morning to some Democratic senators over there that are more aligned with what we want to do. They want to do something about the border. One of the loudest voices blocking McCarthy from passing a short-term spending bill is far-right Florida Congressman Matt Gates, And those tensions reportedly boiled over in a closed-door meeting with the Speaker. My frustration is that we're $33 trillion in debt, running $2 trillion annual deficits with no real end in sight. That's my frustration. Congressional Democrats on the offense criticizing the GOP for holding an impeachment inquiry on Joe Biden just two days before the government shuts down, pointing out the financial pain a closure would cost Republican constituents. In Chairman Comer's district, Republicans shut down will cost 8,937 of his constituents their paychecks. In Jim Jordan's district, Republicans shut down will cost 3,939 of his constituents their paychecks. And millions of federal workers could potentially lose pay, a prospect that is already worrying military families like the Kerrigs, who have a daughter with health issues. The question has really become, what can we get rid of? Who can we borrow money from in order to do what we need to keep her alive? We are American workers and we want to do our job. It's good Congress that's locking us out of our job. We want to go do our job. Speaker McCarthy telling reporters that he has still not spoken with President Biden about funding the government. The White House says that House Republicans will get full blame for a government shutdown. On Capitol Hill, Liz Landers, ABC News. There's a potential for fog to roll into the state line as we head into the evening. Up next, Candace gives us the rundown on the dare we say hot weekend ahead? Now, your first warned weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. 
Yeah, it'll be nice to see some sunshine here, especially once we get into the weekend and really for tomorrow afternoon. It's also going to be nice to be able to wake up and have the sun out there uh, rather than some of these cloudy, foggy mornings and rain showers too. Tomorrow morning, unfortunately, we are going to be waking up most likely to some fog. This evening, we've got cloud cover and pretty uh thick out there this evening. I was just trying to think of the right word to say. Mostly cloudy. That's what I want to say. Mostly cloudy skies, um, but our skies will clear out just a bit here as we go through this evening. Temperature wise, despite the cloud cover, we were still able to make it into the lower 70s. 70 right now, our temperature in Rockford, 71 in Freeport, 71 in Rochelle, and we're currently at 73 degrees in Sterling. We do have a little bit of a breeze out there from the east and northeast. That wind should turn calm tonight, and assuming our skies are able to clear out enough overnight that widespread fog will occur down to 55 degrees for the overnight as our winds are light from the east and southeast. So when we look at our fog potential, notice the visibility will start to drop at about 11, 12 o'clock tonight. If we hold on to the cloud cover a little longer, it may take a little while before we start to see that fog begin to settle in. But I think the thickest will come just before sunrise tomorrow. So anywhere between about four and six o'clock, we'll really start to see that fog settle in. That'll actually last for about eight, nine o'clock tomorrow morning and even still some fog lingering late into the morning hours really won't be until about noon that will start to clear things out and see a return of sunshine which when we do our temperatures will warm quickly into the mid 70s for tomorrow afternoon. Winds will pick up a little from the east and southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Should feel fairly comfortable out there. So as we go through time with future casts, notice as that fog begins to settle in, that'll stay with us through tomorrow. Winds turning to the southeast tomorrow afternoon. We'll see a return of sunshine. Don't have to worry about fog potential tomorrow night. A little warmer. Temperatures in the upper 50s. Saturday we'll see sunshine. Highs back up around 80 for the afternoon. Any shower activity going to stay to the north. This will be north of Madison for tomorrow. Saturday afternoon. Sunday we are dry. We'll keep those 80s going into the weekend as that warm front sits up to the north. The warm front also kind of the focus for some showers and thunderstorms over the next several days. So that means our forecast after a rather rainy stretch is going to stay rather dry. Our next chance for rain comes in when we start to see this pattern change. So with that dip in the jet stream, cold front coming through, that not only is that cooler air going to settle in, but we're also going to see those uh, temperatures are say the temperatures drop, but then the rain shower chance begin to increase within a week's time. So 76, that's where we had for tomorrow, 80 on Saturday, 81 on Sunday. We are in the low 80s going into early next week. The weekend, we, we won't see many more weekends like this in those low 80s, especially as we get into October and nice weekends too, because I think by next weekend, temperatures will be quite a bit cooler. And then we've got those rain showers returning by the end of next week. The 80s will soon be a distant memory. Candace, thanks. Scott Leber is next with sports. He'll look ahead to tonight's Packers-Lions game and share the bad news the Packers got regarding a key player. Now sports with sports director Scott Leber. The Packers have a shot to take over sole possession of first place in the NFC North tonight. They'll host the Lions in a game that will be streamed by Prime Video. And the Lions won the last three meetings between these teams, including the season finale last year when they kept the Packers out of the playoffs. The Packers could possibly have Aaron Jones and Christian Watson back on the field tonight, but David Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins will again sit out. Bakhtiari will sit out the next four games. He's been put back on injured reserve. Matt LaFleur says the Packers have a chance to win tonight if they play some clean football. They committed nine penalties last week. The young roster leads to a lot of that. Sometimes when you have a lot of youth out there, is, these guys don't always relay calls that well. And But I think they'll get better as the season progresses, and I'm, I'm not in complete panic mode about it yet. We just got to continue to stress that, and it's got to get better. It's got to improve because it, it does make it hard to go out there and execute, and specifically on offense, sustain drives and score points if you're going backwards. Well, I'm picking the Lions in this one, 28 to 17. The Packers' banged-up offensive line is going to struggle against the Lions' defense. The Lions have held seven of their last eight opponents to 20 points or less. Sunday, I've got the Broncos sending the Bears to 0-4. I have more faith in the Broncos' coaching staff than I have in the Bears. Cubs will get one final shot tonight to get a win in Atlanta. They've got Marcus Stroman going to the mound. The Cubs have blown leads the last two nights and wound up with a pair of 1-1 losses. 
And the Diamondbacks lost today to the White Sox 3 to 1, so the Cubs are a game and a half behind the Diamondbacks for that second wild card spot in the National League. In high school golf, the guys went after regional championships yesterday. Today it was the girls' turn. This is the 2A Girls Regional at Atwood Golf Course. And Belvedere Jr. Emma Pearson led the way for Belvedere Co-op. Here she is coming up with a nice par save on the second hole. Pearson shot a 4 over 76 to finish in second place. Boylan's number one, Eva Greenberg, played solid golf today. That's a tap-in birdie right here. Greenberg was the top individual medalist with a 2 over 74. She was also the Nick 10 champion last week. Crystal Lake Central took the first place team title. The Boylan girls finished third. The top golfers from this regional advanced to the Burlington Central sectional next Monday. At Sports, we'll be right back. The temperatures just keep climbing from here on out. We had quite a few clouds today, so we, uh, we yeah. barely made it to the 70s, but this weekend's going to be a very different story. I was taking uh, my younger two to school this morning, and I said, it is going to be nice when we can wake up and we've got sunshine rather than cloud cover. And they're like, yeah, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hard. Those kids to, are smart. It's hard to get going there in the morning yeah. when you've got clouds. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be fog um, that we have to kind of deal with, and some of that could be dense. So up early tomorrow, especially in the open and rural areas, just to be mindful of that, especially at the, as the visibility changes in some spots. Um, we've got cloud cover out there now. The one thing that would limit just how dense that fog gets is if our clouds stick around for a bit longer tonight, but we stay rain free down to 55 tonight. We're 76 for tomorrow, so pretty decent afternoon. Looking forward to those Friday night football games. Evening should be great. I know last Friday we had a dodge a couple of rain showers. 80s for the weekend. That carries over into next week, but then we drop those temperatures by the end of next week. So far, the football season has been pretty great. It has been, yes. Thanks, Candace. Mm -hmm. Stay safe.